Hi! So, you know I love building with Legos, but I found this really neat um, rainbow that we will actually be playing with today. But I was curious to know if I could build it up. I wonder how high I can build it. Ah! Ah! <gasps> Yay! All right, we're gonna have fun with this rainbow today, so grab your supplies and let's get started. Already printed out and ready to go. So let me describe how you play this game. I'm gonna find a friend to play with me over here. Here we are. Is um, surfer Fred. He's got a surfboard on his shirt. Here we go. All right, Fred, you get a green pen and a green token, and I'll take a purple pen and a purple token. So I'm gonna go first. Thanks, Fred. And I'm gonna put my color token on four. So as you can see on your chart, the bottom numbers are factors, and in the square, all these numbers are up here are the product. Do you remember what that means? So hopefully you remember, when I multiply two factors together, I will get a product. Okay, so this will be my answer in my multiplication from down here. So if I put that on four, now it's Fred's turn, and he gets to take his green token and put it in any of these other numbers. So let's say he puts it on seven. So then he would take these two numbers, he would find the product of four and seven. So four times seven, I knew you had it, 28. So he would take his green pen and he would cross off 28. Okay. Now, Fred's goal is to get four in a row of the same color, and that's my goal too. So then I'm gonna go next. So I can only move one of these tokens. I can't, I can't move both. So if I take mine, I can put it on any other number. Hmm, I think I'm gonna put it on three. So now I am gonna find the product of three and seven. You got it already, 21. Then I'm gonna take my purple pen and I'm gonna cross off 21. Okay, and then of course it's Fred's turn again and he can take either one of these tokens and move it, find the product. Now his goal is to hopefully get one of these surrounding his 28 because he can get four in a row diagonally, across, or, or I should say horizontally or vertically. All right, have fun playing a game with a friend and um, let's get started with our lesson today. So, I'm looking at my Legos here, and I've counted out 18 of them. So I should have 18 Lego people here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17! Uh-oh. <laughs> I lost one. Let's go find it. Oh, she was my helper for my game. Founder, 18. Now, with my 18 Legos, I, if I arrange them into three different groups, I wonder how many we would have in each group. So, if I took my 18 and I divided my 18 into three groups, how many do you think would be in each group? Let's find out if six is correct. So, if I had three groups, we will be... Doing our three groups right here. There's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right. I equally distributed them into three different groups. How many are in each group? Great. Six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Wonderful. So, Divided into three groups does equal six in each group, but also if I took six Legos, Lego people, and I multiplied it by three groups, how many would I get in all? Great. 18. All right, so we're going to learn a little bit about factors and multiples today. So in looking at these um, equations right here, I find that six is a factor of 18. 
Do you think three is two? Yeah, three. So they're both factors of 18. Okay? Now, let's now, so if these are factors, what about multiples? What makes it different and how are they related? 18, if I told you, is a multiple of 3. Do you think you can figure out how or why 18 can be a multiple of 3? Well, if we count by 3s, we're going to start with 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So we just discovered that 18 is a multiple of 3. What if I asked you, is 18 a multiple of 6? Well, let's find out. Let's count. 6, 12, 18. Yes, 18 is a multiple of 6 also. What if I asked you, if, is 4 a factor of 10? So is 4 a factor of 10? We said that 3 is a factor of 18, and we said that 6 is a factor of 18. Is 4 a factor of 10? And one way you may figure that out is by counting by 4s. You can go 4, 8, 12. It doesn't look like it, but what you can also do, if the numbers are larger and you're not quite sure, you can take your 10 and you're dividing it by 4, because we want to know, is 4 a factor of 10? And if it is, it will be divided into it evenly. Uh-oh. It looks like I have what we call a remainder. So when there's a remainder, we know that 4 is not a factor of 10. All right? And one way to remember the difference between factors and multiples is to think of it this way. Right here, it is a fact that I have just two Legos in my hand, right? I just, I just have two. So our factors are going to be, usually, they're, they're going to be smaller than the number given. So for example, when I ask if it's for a factor of 10, we found out that that one wasn't. But all of our factors are going to be less than 10 in that situation. Whereas with multiples, you can kind of relate it to the word multitude. I have a multitude of Legos in my hands. So multiples are going to start with the number given and go up. And they can keep going on and on and on and on where there's a multitude of them. For example, if I asked you find the multiples of 10, you would start with 10. Go 10, 20, 30, 40, and you can keep going on because there's a multitude of them. So hopefully that might help you remember the difference between a factor and a multiple. But let's have some fun finding factors right now. So let's find some factors. What if I gave you the number 54? This is how we're going to use our rainbow to find out how many factors we can find. So what I like to do is always start with my 1 over here. Okay. Now, 1 times what is going to give us our 54? Great, 54. So 54 is always going to be, my number that's given is always going to be on the, the edge. And you see how it connects with this, our rainbow right here? Okay. Now, then I'm going to go to 2. And we're going to learn some tricks to know if 2 is a factor of a number in just a second. But can we look at these two numbers and go, oh, I think 2 must be a factor of 54. And again, remember, I can always take my 54 and divide it by 2 to see if it does, um, if it is even. So how many groups of 2 can I get out of 5? Great. If I multiply those two together and subtract, I will end up getting 14. Great. Is 14 divided by 2? Does 2 go into 14 evenly? Yep. Wonderful. Yay, I love it when we get our zero. So we know the product of 2 and 27. Ah, I'm going to put a comma right there to separate those two numbers. So my 2, my brown, is going to come all the way over to my 27. Then I'm going to actually go to number 3. And I may not know yet if, um, three, if 54 is evenly divisible by 3, but let's see. Let's find out as we work through it. Great. If I subtract, 
That was 310. So what would I get down here? Wonderful. 24. Okay. Hmm. Does 3 go into 24 evenly? Yes. It does. The product of 8 and 3 is 24. So yeah, it looks like 3 is a factor of 54. And 3 times 18 does equal 54. So that is my next rainbow right here. Now, if you don't have your wooden rainbow at home, that's okay. You can draw the lines. So maybe make sure you have a bunch of fun colored pencils with you. And you can start by just doing different colors of your rainbow to connect these numbers. Okay. So four, can we look at this and see if four works? Let me erase these two right here. Hmm, what's your guess? Uh, I think you're right. I'm not sure if four goes into 54 evenly. It's actually four tens. <gasps> We're kind of going through fast through our division here because I know you've worked on it so much in your earlier lessons. You know what? No, four is not. We have a remainder down here. So th three, sorry, um, yep, four is not a factor. What about five? Can we just look at this number and see if uh, this could be divisible by five? Nope, it can't. We do have a fun um, divisibility rule where the ones has to be a zero or a five for a five to go in there evenly. All right, how about six? Let's just take it right here and see. Yep, you, I know many of you know your nines. You know that nine times six is 54. Great, so we have six and we have nine, okay? You see right here, as our numbers are getting closer, this is helpful for us to know. Now that we, now we know only seven or eight can fit in here. So do you think 54 is divisible by seven? Hmm, you may be thinking seven times seven, 49. How about seven times eight? 56, so seven is not. So if seven is not, is, is eight gonna be divisible by 54? No, it's not either. So we are done finding our factors. So these will be our factors. One, two, three, six, nine, oops, 18, 27, and 54. And these are all factors. Of 54 and this helps us so we don't miss any in the middle okay we don't want to forget our factors of 54 because we'll use them again in just a second so I'm gonna write 54 up over here oops 54 and I'm gonna list my factors right here one two three six nine oopsie 18 27 and 54. Okay, so we're gonna play with one more number and this way, this time I'll draw it out so you see the difference. We're gonna now find the factors of 36. So here's our, here's our number. And we're gonna draw a rainbow this time. 36, again, we start with our one and our 36. Sometimes I don't know how wide to bring my numbers because I wanna make sure I have space for them all. Sometimes I need to squeeze them in and that's okay. But I'm gonna draw my rainbow here, a one and 36. All right, let's go to two. You may already know this one. Is 36 divisible by two evenly? Or in other words, what is half of 36? Great, 18. Okay, let's do our next one. Three. Is 36 divisible by three. Yep, you probably even noticed already. It is. Three times 12 is 36. Okay, do you think there's more? Do you think we can find more factors? How about four? Great, yeah, if you know your nines, right? Nine times four is 36. How about five? 
Remember the clue I gave you earlier? Yeah, the ones has to be a zero or a five and it's not. So it's not divisible by five. How about six? I knew you knew that one. Yes, six times six is 36. And what happened is that we got six times six. So both of our factors there are six. So we know that that's the end. And sometimes I'll put a little dot just like this. All right, so these are now our factors of 36. So 36, our factors are one, two, let's see, let's write these. One, two, three, four, six, nine, 12, 18, and 36. Okay, I'm gonna erase our rainbow. Now, my next question is, do 54 and 36 have some factors in common? You may be asked this way in your book sometimes. Find the common factors of 54 and 36. So we're just gonna look for those numbers that they both have in common. Now, they both have number one in common, so we're gonna circle our one. Good, you notice number two, they have two in common. Three in common, six. Yep, they do have six in common. Do they have four in common? Nope, because 54 does not have four as a factor. How about nine? Great, nine, 18. Wow, they have a lot of factors in common, don't they? How about 12? Nope, 27, 36. 54, I think we found all of our common factors. So we can say the common factors of 54 and 36 are one, two, three, six, nine, and 18. Okay, so those are our common factors. What if I asked you next what the greatest, let's get this in all capitals, the greatest common factor. What might you think I'm asking there? Hmm, the greatest common factor. Yeah, so when we look for the greatest common factor, we're gonna look for the largest number, right? The highest in value. So that is gonna be our 18. So 18 is the greatest common factor of 54 and 36. All right, so hopefully that was helpful for you. We found some factors, then some common factors, and then the greatest common factor of two numbers. <laughs>
We're going to do four. We're going to circle these. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. Great job. 24. You notice how I'm also circling them, even though they're X'd out because they're a multiple of three, I'm still circling them if they're a multiple of four. 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, and 48. Wonderful. Okay, we're gonna do just one more number here. Let's see, mm, how about nine? So we're gonna start with nine. 18, I know you've been probably working on hopefully your nines. We're gonna work through them all year this year too. So nine, 18, 27. Great, let's do it on our 100 number chart. Let's see, nine, we're gonna start with nine. Let's, let's just do this, there we go. Nine, 18, 27, 36, great, 45. Do you see another pattern? <laughs> I just noticed our nines. Look at that pattern down there. Okay, so based upon what we've done here, let me ask you this first. Do you see a common multiple that both three and four have? So look for any number that has both black and red, and that's gonna be a common multiple of three and four. I see 12, 24, did we miss any? 48, did I get them all? So those are all common multiples of three and four. Now again, hmm, do you think we would ask about the greatest common multiple or the least or lowest common multiple? Now with multiples, because they can keep going on forever and ever, we want to find the lowest, okay, or the least common multiple. So the lowest between, of three and four would be the very first number we see that are both black and red. So 12 would be three and four's least or lowest common multiple, okay? Now, we did three numbers. Do you see any of them that all three of them have in common? Did you find it? 36. So 36 is a common multiple of 3, 4, and 9. All right, great job with your multiples. Again, you can finish off up to 100 if you'd like to. It's pretty fun. Here are a few divisibility rules that might help you out in finding factors. Now, no need to memorize these now. You'll continue to work with them, and I'm, I'm certain that they're going to become or feel more familiar to you or common to you. But if you want to, it's a fun challenge for you to memorize these. Now, the first one is the div divisibility rule of two. Now, two will be a factor of any number that n, uh, in its one's place has a zero, two, four, six, or eight, okay? It is gonna be a factor of any number that has any of these numbers in the ones place. For example, if I asked you, is 58, is two, is two a factor of 58? You would see, oh, well, eight's in the ones place, and based upon a rule that I learned, yes, it is, because eight is in the ones place, and if it's an eight, it is divisible by that number. Okay, that's the two rule. Now the three rule, with number three, actually the sum, if the sum of the digits are divisible by three, then it is a factor. So for example, if I gave you the number 54, and if I added five plus four, what would I get? Nine. Is three a factor of nine? Yeah, three, six, nine, yes. 3 times 3 is 9. So 54 is also going to be, uh, or 3 is also going to be a factor of 54 because when I add them together, I actually get um, a number that is divisible by 3. Okay? That's <laughs> a little bit of a tricky one. I don't have a 4 divisibility rule for you, but I do have a 5, and we've already talked about that. What is it? Yes. It's um, divisible by 5 if the ones place is a 0 or a 5. Okay. Now, six is, I think, the trickiest. If the number is divisible by two and three, 
Okay, so the number has to be divisible by two and three. For example, if I gave you the number 72, is 72 divisible by two? Yeah. How about by three? It may take you a little bit longer to figure that one out, but that one is two. So because 72 is divisible by both two and three, it's gonna be divisible by six, okay? Now, let's do, I don't have a seven or eight one, but maybe you can find one for me. <laughs> but let's do nine. Nine is also similar to three, and if you take your number and you add them together, five plus four is nine. Is nine divisible by nine? Yes, or nine divisible by nine? <laughs> it is. So that means that actually um, 54 is divisible by nine. How about this one, 108? So if we added all these together, one plus zero, plus eight, what would we get? Nine. Is nine divisible by nine? Yes, so nine is a factor of 108. All right, hopefully those rules will help you. And again, with our tens, as you know, um, the ones always has to be a zero for it to be divisible by 10. All right, you guys, have a great day, and we will see you next time.